Hi, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your September 2020 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. Now before we dive into this reading, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body, like storm clouds. Feeling yourself enter into this calm, quiet, safe place. All right. So I'm going to be moving your Queen of the Moon and your Moonology cards over to the side. These will later be layered on top of the tarot to really give Luna a voice of her own. So let's see here. How will Gemini be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Gemini be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Gemini be affected by the September 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. These two. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels. Angels and spirit guides. Angels. Fantastic. Okay. I'm going to put these cards over to the side. Now I have the moon all laid out here. From full moon to full moon. So from the 2nd of September to the 1st of October. I was going to say August, but that's wrong. The 1st of October. So we will get to this in just a moment. We also have your spirit animals right here. Now on the left hand side, this is your inner self. The middle is your emotional self. And the right hand side is your public self. And this is how the moon will be affecting you in these three arenas. All right. So we start with the Knight of Wands, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, a very strong pull to the full moon in Aries on October 1st. Then we have the Page of Pentacles. This is a strong pull to the new moon on the 17th of September in Virgo. So there's a lot of learning and understanding that's coming here. There's a lot of moving forward and determination. Then you have the Queen of Cups, which really means that this Pisces full moon, this mystic moon, is going to have such an a impact on you. It's really going to have you stepping into the arena of a queen. And then we have the Five of Swords. It's karmic, it's real, it's powerful, you are victorious, but at times you will question things. We have the Queen of Pentacles. That's beautiful, that progression from a student to a queen. Very beautiful, queenly energy here, which is really correlating with the feminine energy that is part of this moon. 
and that is connecting with the High Priestess. Then we have the Six of Cups. We have the Four of Wands. This is a beauty that cannot be, cannot be denied. And then the Emperor, again, strong connection with the Aries full moon in October, but also there is a sense of determination, positivity. This is a sense of owning your worth and knowing what you desire. So that's going to be huge for you. The Ten of Swords, mm -hmm. you're letting something go. It brings you to the magician, a whole new world, a whole new way to move forward. The Hermit, okay, again, the Virgo, new moon, very strong for you. But this is also a very kind of private time, very intuitive, turning inward time for you. Now, Virgo energy is, of course, and time frame is, of course, from September 20 to 23rd, no, from August 23rd, there we go, to September 22nd. So that's going to be very powerful for you right here. And then we have the Three of Cups. The Three of Cups is twofold. So one thing is that you're definitely knowing the people that you can trust. But you're going to have a hard time trusting yourself when it comes to that arena because you've had had people who celebrate you, who sit there and say, you know, you've got this, you know, you, you definitely understand things, I, I'm right here for you, and then turn around and walk away. And they're kind of like, I never had your back to begin with. And that's a scar for you, Gemini. That's a scar that really, really runs deep. For everybody, those scars run deep. But Gemini, you have a way of, if you're by a person's side, you're by their side, right? If you're not by their side, you will tell them, no, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be a part of this farce, or I don't believe in this, and you move forward. You're very honest, if not a little bit brutal sometimes. I myself am a Gemini, and that's just how we are. So here, there is something here where it's karmic. Now, this could be a betrayal that was done by a father figure or by a father, where it was a karmic lesson that you had to learn, but it scarred you, or somebody who it could be a partner, most likely a male partner, but somebody who was also, it can be somebody who is very, very quote unquote male in the relationship, had very male energy, but this is somebody who, who ruled and who had a real authority in your life that's coming forward and you're moving away from the hurt that was caused and you're moving towards being able to trust again and towards being able to have the life that you want, which is really something quite beautiful. It's like, you've just freed yourself. And this could be from a past life. This could be from something you inherited, you know, through your DNA line. You could hear, you know, adults talking when you were little. Oh, you really can't trust anybody. It always just has to be on you. Are you going to be able to take care of everything? It all just ends up on your own shoulders anyway. Don't be surprised type of thing that, that you're seeing here. Or can just be a feeling that you had. Like, no, it's all going to just end up on my shoulders. And that's past life trauma, past life drama coming into play but you're victorious. You really are victorious. The repeat of the number four here has you looking at yourself, what you desire, the way that you want to move forward in your life, and it really has you taking care of yourself. You're going to see some truths about things, things that have held you back. So this moon right here brings forth power and a surrendering to the divine, which is what you're doing during this time of the Pisces full moon because this is the mystic moon. This is also the dreamer's moon and the poet's moon and the witch's moon. This is a moon that moves you forward towards greater knowledge. And the mysteries of the high priestess are coming forward, meaning the veil is being lifted from your eyes during this time. It really is. You are emotionally astoundingly connected. This is a time to embrace compassion and understanding. This is a time of intuition and really embracing yeah, your self-knowledge. The veil between the spirit world and this world is astoundingly thin, and you're really taking advantage of it, Gemini. You're going to hear kind of whispers on the wind. And I know that that sounds either whimsical or romantic, but you're going to be hearing truths that before were once denied. And it's coming to you in the most unexpected way, but it really is moving you forward. This is the perfect time for divination, connection with spirit. This is also a perfect time for working with the cleansing and healing powers of water, making sure that you drink enough water. It's also going to be really important. You're going to be so kind of impacted by things emotionally that you'll forget to drink water or you'll forget to take care of yourself. And Spirit is really saying during this time, don't forget. Because 
in the cards, it says right here, balance spirituality with practicality. Make sure your soul is being nourished as well as, as everything else. It's going to be so terribly important to you because you are understanding so much during this time and the veil is lifted from your eyes. That can be very intense. It really can be. And you can crave sleep and meditation and prayer, which is really good, right? Except if you want to just simply escape into sleep. So that one, just be mindful of. But it also makes us crave alcohol and drugs and anything that will induce a, a state of escaping the harshness of this world, escaping the harshness of reality. So just be mindful of this during this time that you're feeling everything so deeply that it can become a little bit too intense. It can become a little bit too much. And you're going to really need to connect with spirit and say, if things are becoming too much, not, oh my gosh, if I don't kind of put my foot down, then I'm never going to be able to move forward. It's like, no, if, yeah, yeah, if I don't put my foot down, I'm never going to be able to move forward. It's like, no, if you put your foot down and you say, this is too much for me, I can't, I can't handle this. I can't take this on. Spirit is going to look at you and be like, okay, we can go slow. We can, because you are standing up in your truth and in your power and not coming from a place of fear. So that actually means that you are going to progress in a way that really is absolutely beautiful for you. And it's very empowering. It's very calming. It's very centering. And it leads you here to being able to open the doors to new beginnings, which is what the new moon is all about on the 17th of September. You open the doors to new beginnings and you know that a new start is coming. And with the Virgo new moon, it says it's a time to give rather than take. And so here it's a time to give of compassion, of understanding, connecting with those deities of compassion. You know, we have Kuan Yin, we have the Virgin Mary, we have Hestia, we have, you know, all these other figures, and they're usually female, that represent compassion and understanding and caring and nurturing. And this is going to be where you feel you're most comfortable and you really feel yourself walking through another to another state of being, to another way of really embracing the realization of what you want and how you want to move forward. There's a peace that comes over you and it's a peace that has been well earned and well desired during this time. And it's actually been desired for quite some time, for some time here. You've been looking for that way to move forward. You've been, you know, being a student of your prosperity. The past has held you back as the past has a tendency to do. And now you're stepping into your power, your passion, where you want to be within your life because you're learning how to celebrate yourself. And that really does prepare you for the full moon in Aries, where it says a fiery climax approaches, a fiery, you know, truth, passion, and desire moves you forward to something really quite surreal and really quite intoxicating. So here you are moving towards this, this state of of trusting yourself, of knowing what you desire, of knowing where it is that you want to be. Maybe not 100% because when do we ever know 100% about anything? But it's having this trust in yourself and it's knowing that this moon has really filled your cup and moved you forward in truth to help guide you in this passion for the next moon to come, for the harvest moon to come in and for you to, to harvest the, these possibilities and this prosperity. Now, the spirit animals for... Now, for September are the bear spirit and the owl spirit. Now, the bear spirit represents dominion, dominion over yourself, over the way that you want to move forward. It says take time out here. And so you're taking time out to really focus on what you're planting over your heart, what you desire, the way that you want to move forward. This is also authority and being larger than life. There's going to be this power to your personality. You're also astoundingly protective and committed to those that you see are weaker or those that you see have injustices in their life. And you're going to sit there and be like, well, that's just not fair. And fairness is going to be very important to you because this mama bear mentality, Gemini, is very powerful in your life right now and it's really coming forward. And especially if you already have a bit of the mama bear in you, that's going to be amplified or papa bear, you know, whichever one it is. And then we have here the owl spirit. You see clearly now. You really do see clearly. This is amplified by the fact of the Pisces full moon. So the spirit animal is the owl. This is a deep connection with wisdom, but this is also a very powerful connection 
with the high priestess. You're seeing beyond the mask that people wear. The veil is being lifted from your eyes and you are moving forward in that powerful understanding. This is astoundingly sharp vision. This is keen observational skills. You're really seeing things that others try to hide away or that others really don't notice. You're very insightful. You're astoundingly intuitive. Make sure you realize this. Now, during this time, Gemini, as you're taking everything in, you're going to kind of want to keep this more to yourself. And I know you have this beautiful desire to, to talk and to share and to, you know, bring this wisdom forward. But this is going to be something very private for you. You could do this more in October, most definitely. But for right now, in September, this is going to be your quiet truth. This is going to be your passionate understanding. And it really is leading you forward to so much more. So people might say, oh, you're being a bit secretive. It's like, well, I'm not being secretive. I'm just not sharing absolutely everything because I don't feel like it's necessary and I don't feel like it's your business. So here, when people, or if people say, you know, oh, you're, you're not sharing it all with me. Why are you being such a sneak or why are you being so secret, secretive? It's like, I'm not. I am embracing my truth and my understanding and I need to go through this journey right now very privately, very connectively with myself, my spirit and, and my angels to be able to move forward in my truth and to be able to move towards what I desire. And that can't happen if I have the noise and the chatter of everybody else overpowering me. And you're going to really see that that is a big part of this time, this kind of meditative understanding of this knowledge, this moving you forward in dream and in reason and in you know this beautiful way that you're putting all things together, like a living poem is really what this time is for you, which is really quite beautiful. And then it leads you to the spirit animals of October, which are the crow spirit and the dove spirit. So the crow spirit here, the crow spirit you're going to think like, oh, it's not that big a deal. You know, it's not that beautiful. It's, it's not going to have that power but it really is a really big deal to be moving into this crow spirit because this is you co-creating with spirit. And there is such more depth and beauty and brilliance to a crow than what we realize. So here, if you look at her, she has this beautiful purple and blue of her feathers. There's just going to be this beauty that isn't seen and isn't shared by others. It's kind of like crows can learn more words than, um, than parrots can. They also make for life. They're astoundingly loyal. They, they really are magnificent birds. But if you don't know it, you'll just think, oh my gosh, they're, they're nasty. They you know, feed on dead carcasses. They are, it's known as a murder of crows as they move forward. And yes, there's a malevolence to them. But there's also a beauty to them, a, a majesty to them that really is, is quite astounding. And we're going to be seeing that more and more. It's kind of like understanding the both sides of ourselves, not sitting there and think, oh, I can only be one way. It's kind of like Jung, it's Jung, Carl Jung said, when we embrace our shadow selves, when we know the full extent of what it means to be, to be harsh and to be cruel, and we can see ourselves going there in our minds, it's not that we choose not to go there because we were too weak to, to realize the monster within, but we choose not to go there because we see the monster within, and we say, I'm keeping you barred in that cage and I'm not letting you move forward. And it's by that realization and by that power that you have here the dove spirit where it says, be peace, be peace, be harmony, be understanding. This is the deep connection to wisdom, all right? This is bringing messages of peace and hope and inspiration into your heart, especially when your heart is hurting, especially if you've been through really hard times and you need this healing energy. This healing energy is right there with you. This is gentle compassion, which follows the theme of compassion from September, from the full moon in September of Pisces, right into October. And it really does move you forward in a sense of determination and it releases you from the pains that you have been holding because you learn that not only can you forgive others, but more importantly and more powerfully, you can forgive yourself for anything that you see, that you think that you might have done and anything that you have done because sometimes our mind makes things into such bigger obstacles to overcome than they actually are. And there's a kindness to yourself, there's a majesty, there's a brilliance that the crow spirit really helps you see within your heart and the, the dove spirit crowns you on your, on your crown chakra, you know, crowns you forward with. 
And as you're moving forward in this truth, you are passionate, you are determined, you are dedicated. You're like, no, this is who I am and this is where I want to be. The Knight of Wands is the second fastest moving knight. He's not sitting there hemming and hawing and Gemini, as an air sign energy, you are the fastest moving knight. You don't like to sit there and kind of, you know, wiggle your thumbs and say, oh, should I do this? Shouldn't I do this? It's like, no, you like to act and you like the passion of acting. And so here, there are some times where you sit there and you go, oh, I really wish I would have thought that through. I really wish I would have considered things more. But here you're going to be like, I need to move forward for the passion of me, for what I desire, what I want, and where I'm heading in my life. I will not be held back. I will not be silenced. And I am moving towards this truth. So your air sign energy really does fan these flames. So just be mindful that your temper doesn't get the best of you, that you kind of keep both feet firmly planted, planted on the ground for at least 75% of the time because you need your dreams and you need, you know, the visualization of what seems to be absolutely absurd at a time becoming absolutely part of your truth and part of the history that has made you. And as, as you move forward in this way, defending your passion, defending what you desire, this is, you know, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So you have strong Aries presence right here in this reading, connecting you with this full moon in October. And there is this sense of moving towards so much more. And as you are determined, as you are focused, you're actually seeing everything that you need to kind of line up. And this leads you to the Page of Pentacles. Now, again, this amplifies the Hermit presence, the Virgo presence, and the new moon on the 17th of September in Virgo. But this is also, as you're moving forward in passion, as doors are opening, as you're having this faith in yourself, you're seeing things and you're saying, okay, well, I need to learn about this. I need to increase this way. I need to understand this. I need to, you know, do this. And you're putting everything together and you're moving forward in power. You're moving forward in truth. And as you do this, you're opening up doors. You really are because you're not afraid to ask questions. You're not afraid to kind of, you know, sit and learn and be quiet for a bit and take things in and then mull it over in your mind and make these beautiful connections that for a lot of time, yeah, when, when before, before, there we go, you wouldn't have made. You're, you're seeing this, the sense of it's not as scary as I thought it was. And that's going to be really great for you, Gemini, because you have this beautiful mind, this beautiful way of words, this beautiful imagination, and you can make things super scary if you want to. So here, it's like, no, I can, I can do this step by step, inch by inch. I move forward in success, in determination, in harmony, in this power of self, because I'm not afraid to learn. I'm not afraid to ask questions. I'm not afraid to ask for help. I'm not afraid to, you know, kind of look at things differently and say, okay, well, that could be your truth but it's not mine. And I'm embracing my truth and my power. And it leads me to the queen of cups. Astoundingly strong, Pisces energy moving you forward. Water sign energy, of course, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, just as this earth sign energy is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This is moving you towards knowing more. This is moving you towards, you know, embracing kindness and compassion and understanding and peace and harmony, and a sense of, of seeing, of learning, of, you know, kind of breaking boundaries and breaking barriers and moving towards your truth. But it's with your heart at the center. And what's so great with this, yeah, what's so great with this, Gemini, is that when you have your heart and your mind coming together, you're unstoppable. Because you're a person of your mind, because you're an air sign energy. And air sign energy represents thoughts and communications, and swords represent thought and communications and skills, hard earned, but never forgotten. And here, there can be times where you become more logical. And I know people sit there and say, well, Gemini is very creative and they flit from thing to thing. It's because you know when it's not right and you don't see the point in wasting your time, right? And sometimes you might sit there and be like, oh, I should go back to that, that was really fun. And you see certain aspects that are really good. But if you, if you didn't flitz, if you didn't, you know, kind of be like a, a bee going from flower to flower, taking, you know, taking the honey, taking the sweetness, you would never know what brings you joy. You just wouldn't because you're so intensely curious. Here, this is putting together the emotional side and the mental side. This is saying, 
I am an emotional being because I firmly believe that we are all emotional beings and we have to learn how to have the conversation between our heart and our mind because if we trust our heart too much and we wind up getting burnt, sometimes we can become astoundingly too logical or we see that, you know, trusting your mind wasn't really the best way or trusting your heart wasn't really the best way to go, so we trust our minds. And then at times we see that trusting our minds can make us too logical, too you know, kind of rigid, and then we go back to just completely trusting our hearts. We need to have that conversation between the two because it's in the middle road that we flourish. It's in the middle road that life is just absolutely so much more fun and beautiful than we had imagined. And so here, as you are embracing the love, the healing, the kindness of the queen of the moon, of, you know, kind of the embodiment of these, these deities of, of compassion, of, of love, of healing, it moves you to a cleanse and it moves you to the very strong connection to the spirit world, just a very strong connection to the spirit world during this time. And as you are cleansed and as you are focused, you see the five of swords and the five of swords is a karmic debt being paid. It is something that makes you feel like, oh my gosh, what have I done? I can't move forward. This is all nonsense. I'm never going to be able to be where I want to be in life. I'm never going to be able to move forward the way that I want to move forward. Nobody takes me seriously. It is such a hard road. I'm always climbing uphill. I'll never get there. It's like all that just kind of vomits on your emotions, like just takes over and, and pains your heart because you want to move forward. And here it's kind of like, well, don't, don't. What is it? Don't put the horse before the cart. Like, don't sit there and think it's over because it's not. Like, don't look at it as, as something terrible because yes, it's hard. And yes, there's a struggle and there's suffering and there's pain and there's disappointment and there's coming up against things that you have come up against before in this life. And you're just, you're just tired of it. And you're tired. For a lot of you Geminis, you're, you're just a bit tired. You're just a bit weary. It's just like, Oh my gosh, one more thing? Like, I don't want one more thing. I can't even think, deal with like a sand more, a like little grain of sand more on my plate. Enough is enough. And here's like, okay, listen, we're not done yet. So stand up tall, shoulders back, and be prepared. It's not going to be as bad as you think it is. It's actually going to be resolved more easily than you had imagined. Now, if you're like me, a queen warrior, and believe that... <laughs> believe that the absolute worst can happen and might very well and you shouldn't get your hopes up sometimes and you have to break that pattern like that is something that I work on to to break and say you know what no I'm not going to sit there and worry and you know see that the sky is falling or think that the sky is falling when it's not I'm just not doing that to myself and here it's remembering that it's not making things worse in your head it's sitting there and saying okay I'm embracing my logical side which you're an air sign energy you have a logical brilliant side to you I'm connecting it with my heart. I'm telling my heart to stay calm, to stay focused, to embrace love. And I'm moving forward. And I'm moving forward, conquering things that once seemed insurmountable, that I once thought, oh, I'll never be able to do that. And now you're seeing doors open up. You're seeing truth come forward. You're seeing yourself embracing your compassion, your understanding, and your brilliance for yourself. And it moves you. It moves you to a place of wealth. And knowing that you deserve this place of wealth at your heart. It moves you to this queen of pentacles energy, right? Now this is Taurus Virgo Capricorn, okay? Again, strongly linked to the new moon on the 17th of September. It moves you forward in, in a cunning truth, in a passionate way of embracing freedom. And it's not, it's not taking it away from you. It's not sitting there and saying, oh, you have to be ruthless or you have to be, you know, kind of cutthroat in order to make it. It's like, no, you have to be true to yourself. And just by being true to yourself and, and different, you know, and not caring about being different and saying, this is me. It embraces a natural cunning because Gemini, your mind works so fast that people would sit there and say, well, you know, that's not fair. I didn't see that. I didn't get that. It's like, well, you know, you can't help other people's talents. You just can't. So this is one of your talents. People might say it was sneaky. It's not. You are really looking at long-term goals at long-term desires for life. You're looking at the bigger picture and you're setting it up slowly and steadily. You're building yourself forward to something so much more than you had originally thought and something that is very, very powerful, very meaningful for you because of this. This leads you 
to the Six of Pentacles. So the Six of Pentacles is having to face something that you really don't want to. Again, it's kind of like the Five of Swords. The Six of Pentacles is, I'm sorry, not the Six of Pentacles, the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups is the past coming in. And the Six of Pentacles, Spirit kept on having me say that over and over again because of the Queen of Pentacles moving to the Six of Cups. There's something like it isn't fair. It isn't fair and it isn't balanced. And here, it's kind of like all the big moments of your life so far. It feels like they weren't fair, they weren't balanced. Or something had more of them. Something had made you worry or doubt. Or you spent, yeah, maybe more time worrying than enjoying where, where you were moving forward to and how you were moving forward in life. And here, it's a taking away of the negativity that was spoken over you. And it can be that somebody said to you, you know, you're never going to make a good partner. You're never going to be a successful person. You're never going to, you know, you don't have any talent. So why even try? And you know what? That's messed up to say to somebody, first of all. And especially here, when this is somebody who's young. This is somebody who's impressionable. And this is somebody whose world right now is pretty much them. Their families, yes, school and everything like that. But your world is very you-centric and can stay you-centric for your whole entire life. A lot of people does. But here, it's, it's when you were small. And when kids are small, their whole world is just them. And what you're looking at here is you're looking at the hurts, the pains, the disappointments that come back. I remember when I was in my early teens, my best friend's uncle said to me, you know, never get married, you'll make a terrible wife. And I was hurt by that. But I thought, oh, okay, well, he'd know. But he's a bully, and that's why I didn't like him. And he didn't treat his wife nicely at all. But I gave my power to him. And that's what I'm seeing here. It's kind of like, it's that imbalance in the scales. And it's the sitting there and saying, you know what, your impression of me does not impact me at all. You know, it's not my truth. It's your truth, fine, but it's not mine. And you're seeing yourself now in a whole new white light, and that's why she has the white all on her. You know, white is a big deal color in most cultures, like to move forward in, to move forward in different aspects of your life, okay? And, you know, in Western cultures, it represents, you know, a happiness moving forward. In Eastern cultures, white can represent and, and does represent funerals. So it's a mourning from one stage of your life to the next. And here it is powerful for you. It is powerful as you see this. And as you're releasing it, it's moving you forward in a way that you hadn't anticipated. And it's moving you towards the four of wands. It's moving you towards it's a celebration. Now, this is the minor arcana wedding card. So this could be a celebration of marriage, a celebration of connection, a celebration of marriage to the truth of you. This is something, this is a joy that cannot be extinguished. It just can't be. This can be new job opportunities coming in. This could be moving house. This could be, you know, contemplating moving house, starting to see the world open up to you and you're making plans. Of course, right now with everything that's going on in the world, staying put is a good idea. But here it's kind of looking at what you desire to move forward with and your, your passions and your beauty of your heart and saying, I'm not going to be held back anymore and I'm not going to be defined by anybody else. I am defined by me. And as you say this and as you believe this, it's like you are this queen of, of compassion, of love, of joy, of understanding, and you're showering that in your life for yourself because you face these karmic debts, these karmic hurts, which I really see here with the Five of Swords and the Six of Cups. And it had to do with your prosperity. It had to do with the, pro the, yeah, the bounty, the prosperity that moved you forward in. And so here, it's like, I'm opening myself up to wealth that I once thought I didn't deserve, to a prosperity and a comfort in life that I thought I'd always have to fight, fight for. And now I know that it is a part of me. And as you do this, the emperor comes forward. And I love the emperor because he always makes me think of King David in the, in the Old Testament. And King David wasn't perfect. And that's one of the things I really like about him. He could be a bit of a jerk, you know? And he saw that in himself. He saw that in himself. And he saw that bad things happened to him because, you know, he got his 
his wife's first husband killed. You know, he did these things. And we sit there and we think, that's not a little bit bad. That's a lot of it bad. And he didn't look at himself and say, I am beyond redemption. I should just go hide away. He sat there, he said, wow, I made mistakes. And some of those mistakes, really big. And what I'm going to do is own it and move forward from it and say, I know where I don't want to be. I know who I don't want to be. And I strive to be the person that I, that I desire being. I'm moving into a form of being that I once thought was unobtainable or I once even didn't think of. You, you could actually see with, with King David when ideas of deities start to change, right? We have the Greek pantheon, right? And they are, they're self-centered. They are like human beings, but with magic powers. And that is what the people wanted from their gods. They wanted them to be absolutely relatable. But then we have Judaism coming forward. And we have this idea of, yes, we are humans. And yes, we are going to fail. But we're not going to be like that. We're not going to indulge in our, you know, in our negativity. We're going to strive for more. And I think that is a remarkable shift in human consciousness. And it's an asking for forgiveness when we, when we mess up. It is a sitting there and a striving for so much more in our lives and believing that we can have it, believing that we can move forward and have some control over fate, even if it's not the control that we would want all the time. And that's astounding. And Gemini, I really see this as being astounding for you because you are embracing this aspect. You are communicating with your angels and your spirit guides. And as a powerful and brilliant communicator, you are really seeing doors open. You're really seeing yourself move forward. And you're really seeing so much more being embraced in your life. Now, a negative fire sign is like Nero, who plays his fiddle as Rome burns. Like, just doesn't care. I rule. You listen to me. That's that. And for a lot of you here, that Nero-esque energy is what you are recovering from, okay? When it comes to a person who's betrayed you. It's kind of like, no, I'm the boss. It could be a boss. It could be, I'm really seeing this as, for a lot of people, this is a parental figure in this life and in past lives, or, you know, somebody where one of your parents might have said, you know, at least I'm not like, like my father was, you know, you should, you should see how lucky you are. And it was a karmic debt that was paid in order to move you forward in the compassion for yourself to say, I'm not living, I'm not living in this truth. It's like, it's like somebody saying, well, it's not bad he doesn't beat you or, you know, she doesn't beat you. It's like, well, that's, that's, that's nothing to judge anything off of. That's not good. You know, it's kind of like saying, oh, that chef is really good. He doesn't put poison in his food. It's like, okay, well, that's great. And here you're really seeing yourself releasing a lot of the hurt and the pain that people have said or people have, have done and they thought they were being helpful but they themselves were so broken, they couldn't help. And this moon is moving you forward in an astounding way, Gemini. And it leads you to the Ten of Swords. In the public arena, you are looking at everything that you have learned, everything that you have fought for, everything that you have desired. And you are sitting there and saying, wow, I actually have a wealth of knowledge. I am new when it comes to my mind, when it comes to the way that I'm moving forward, when it comes to who it is that I want to be. Because I know, I know so much. And you're going to kind of be in awe of everything you learned. After you sit there and think, I've learned nothing. I know nothing. It's like, no, you are astoundingly powerful. And you are embracing that power. Because every hardship you have been through, every time that you have fallen, every despair that you have had, it's made you look at the world differently. It's made you look at you differently. And instead of saying, okay, well, this is somebody else's problem. It's like, no, this is the wisdom that I fought for and that I was forged by. And remember, only nobility were able to hold swords in ancient medieval time. They were highly expensive. They took training <laughs> that was super intense. And they, they set the stage to be able to be a powerful you know, prosperous individual. And that's what we're doing here. As you are embracing your mind, as you're embracing every single heartbreak and pain and disappointment that you have been through, 
that lodges itself in your mind. And you're saying, no more am I being held back by it. I am reborn by it. This is the darkness before the dawn. And your dawn is really quite beautiful. Because once you see this, and spirit helps you see it. Spirit helps you be released from it. This could also be, I know I keep on coming back to this, but this could also be a partner, you know, that just, just wasn't good. Just really, you know, seriously. And people were like, oh, it's not that bad. Again, with the, with the, the thing where, you know, oh, he doesn't beat you or she doesn't beat you. It's like, that's, that's not, that's not saying that the person is good. That is not. Again, it's like the cook doesn't put poison in their food. It's a ridiculous statement. And I understand where it comes from. And I understand why it's there, especially if you, you know, and this is my family history. You know, you have an arranged marriage and the person does beat you and there's no way out. You just have to wait and hope that that person dies before you do. You know, and that was, you know, back, of course, before. But, you know, those stories, those hurts, they get passed down. And especially if you know the person and you sit there and you think, oh, well, okay, at least I don't have to do that. It's like, no, no. This is powerful. And you have here this wisdom that is getting you forward. And it's like, look, I am powerful. I have my gifts. I have my, my passion. I have my understanding. I'm taking in this knowledge. I'm taking in this truth. And I'm moving myself forward. The magician is as above, so below. As you think it, so it becomes. And here, you've just come to an end of a cycle of thought. And it's one that has forged you, most definitely. But it's also one that has left a heavy burden upon your shoulders. Okay, It's one that made you feel like, I can't move forward. I can't be who it is that I want to be. I'm carrying too much. I know too much. Too many secrets. Too much pain. Too much hurt. And here's a secret. It's never, you never carry too much that your angels cannot lift you up from it. As long as you look within yourself and you say, I don't want this anymore. I want to be freed. You will find yourself being freed. And as you focus on yourself moving forward, as you focus on what you desire, what you want and what you need, you find yourself rising up. You find yourself embracing your magic. You find yourself you know, walking into this understanding that you didn't think you had. You didn't think this could be you. The magician, the creator, the conjurer, the person who embraces the God's head within because you thought what was within wasn't worth it. Here's the secret. People tell you you're not worth it because they think you're worth too much and they don't want you to have the power that they want for themselves. Because if a person really cared, they might say, oh, okay, you know, this is not your strength. Maybe we look at things this way. Maybe we move forward this way. You know, they always try to build up, not sit there and knock a person down and just keep on kicking them. It's, it's not, that's not love. And here with this moon, as you connect with the spirit world, as you connect for a lot of you with people who have passed, who you love and adore, and it feels like they're right there. You start to see your magic. You start to see your power. They start to show you. And you start to see doors opening. You start to see yourself opening in a way that is really quite spectacular. And you know your truth. You know, you know your mind. You know your, your reason for getting up in the morning. And if that reason for getting up in the morning is just like simply, I don't want to sleep the day away, it's like still you're embracing it. Baby steps. Baby steps as you begin to conjure and create the world that you want, and to live in the power and the truth that is your birthright. It leads you to the hermit. This is not a time where, you know, you want to be in the middle of everything and everyone. I mean, also because of the state of the world and everything like that, it's not conducive to this, but, and it is conducive to the hermit time. And this is something that you're really looking at. For some of you Geminis, you're going to be like, no, no more hermit time. I get it. I really do. But it's so good for you. It's so good for you right now to kind of sit in meditative power with the magic that is you, with the brilliance that is you, with the way that you are moving forward in your life and to just be blown away. 
just to kind of have your heart stolen by the gorgeousness of what you are creating. And you fall in love. You fall in love with yourself. You fall in love with the way that you're moving forward. You fall in love with, with the world that is opening to you. And it might not be all the time. You might have little moments here and there. But there is a sense of, of beauty and so much more coming forward. And it comes as you quiet the world, as you look within and you say, this is me. And this is who I want to be. This is what I need to connect with. And it moves you to the Three of Cups. You see those people who are by your side. You know the rider dies, right? It's the people who ride with you till the very end. And then we have the people who, for some reason, have more power over us. The nasty negative that make us doubt ourselves. Where we have our people, you know, we have those people who sit there and say, oh, yes, you can. And if you're saying, no, Dana, I don't have those people. You have your angels. You have your spirit guides. You have this connection. It's like, oh, yes, you can. But here, it's the, oh, no, you can't. That becomes louder. That has a power to it that rings throughout your head like a bell. And you're really sitting there, and something is happening where you see this shift, and you're like, well, that's not my truth anymore. That's not what I desire for my life. That's not the way I'm moving forward. You know, that's nonsense, and it's not making any sense to me. Why do I carry these voices from the past? They're ghosts. They're haunting you. Let them go. Let them go. What is it, the Cranberry song, Zombies in Our Heads? That's it. It's what is dead is gone. Still walks around in our heads. And it's enough. It is really quite enough. You're embracing your power. Your truth. And you're sitting there realizing that some people, even though they're supposed to be able to give and enrich our lives, they just can't. They just can't. And that's part of their karmic lesson. The hurt that they imposed, yes, it's part of ours. But them not being able to be there, that's on them. That's not on you, Gemini. It's just not. So let's see what Luna has to say for herself in correlation with everything that the tarot has said. How will Gemini be affected? By the September 2020 full moon. How will Gemini be affected? By the September 2020 full moon. How will Gemini be affected? By the September 2020 full moon. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. to leave this out here. How will Gemini be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Gemini be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Gemini be affected by the September 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. All right. So we have here extremes, most definitely. Growth and balance. So from a, the extremes of your emotions, the way you're taking everything in, you grow and you are embracing Balance, peace, comprehension, patience, which is really beautiful because this is the corn moon and the full moon of Pisces is the corn moon. So you're moving forward in patience with this moon and you're going to need patience to deal with this moon because it is so powerfully intense. It leads you to conclusions are within reach because it is the time to heal. And that is really quite beautiful. This brings you 
to your hard work is paying off as you look at the bigger picture. And emotions run high, most definitely emotions run high because you're purging yourself of so much. And emotions run high because this is a time where you are embracing extremes, where you're feeling powerful and secure and abundant. And then you're also feeling vulnerable and small and as if you're invisible or your voice just kind of evaporates into, into the mist of life and nobody hears and nobody understands and you pendulum back and forth at times. And it's like, no, I stand true to who I am and how they perceive me, how they take me. Like, who said it? How you see me is none of my business. And I like that. I can't remember who said that, but I like that. And that's what you're seeing during this time. It's like, how you see me? It's none of my business. How I see me, that's all of my business. My business. So here, yes, you have extremes. It's the hot moon. Things get fiery. Things get intense. Because the veil is so thin, your emotions are so on point. You're seeing things so clearly. Keep your temper in check, most definitely. Because Gemini's, as air sign energies, we can be biting. We can be straight to the point. And it's like, no. Keep yourself, you know, centered and calm, and yes, if you do need to kind of lose your temper, don't sit there afterwards and beat yourself up for it. But know that extremes are, it's going to be very easy to fall into extremes. And that you're really looking at a lot of extremes here, a lot of ways that you have been pushed and pulled. And you're seeing an extreme sense of truth coming forward. And it brings you to this place of growth, of personal growth, of personal power, of, of coming together, it's like, it's so much bigger than you realized. And you're so much stronger than you gave yourself credit for. And there are times where you have absolutely fallen apart. Absolutely. Because to become a new person, to grow as an individual, you know, and embrace a new way of looking at things, a new way of, of seeing things, we have to fall apart. And it's very hard. But it's very powerful for you. And this growth is moving you forward in the world and moving you forward with a greater sense of strength and understanding. It leads you to balance. It leads you to finding balance as you face this karmic time, as you look at things anew and truthfully and honestly. And as you say, you know what? I see. I see where I need to be. I see how I want to move forward. I see my truth, my power. And it brings you a sense of patience. It brings you to this place of understanding, of peace, as you walk into these new beginnings, as you move yourself forward, as, you know, a spirit si says right here, it's like, as you are loved, as you are cherished, be patient with the way that you move forward. Because yes, it's different than you had expected, but it is still beautiful. It brings you to knowing that the conclusions of the imbalance is within reach, that happiness is guiding you, that there is something beautiful moving you forward, and this beauty is a part of you. Conclusions are within reach. The answers come. They may not come all at once, and they may very well be what you don't want to hear, but it's important that you hear them. It's important that you see, see what spirit and your angels and divinity is guiding you towards because they have a bigger plan and a lot of times we don't know what that is but it is breathtaking and it is powerful and yeah it's moving you forward to a sense of celebration and to a sense of, of newness this leads you to a time of healing a time of coming together a time of authority and strength as you put down your roots and you embrace your power and you say yeah I've messed up but I'm not giving up on me. Absolutely not. It then leads you to knowing that your hard work is paying off, to knowing that you are moving forward towards something greater and something so much more, to see the truth and the power within yourself, and to not think that it was all for nothing, because it's all for something. It is making you into that magician. It is making you into that person who understands the God's head, who understands the power of your individualism and yourself. And lets you move forward with your feet, yes, firmly planted on the ground, knowing 
your truth, knowing your bounty, and knowing your worth. It then leads you to looking at the bigger picture as your hard work pays off, taking aim, taking focus, and saying, this is what I want for my life. This is where I'm going to be. And you have this laser-like precision that is guiding you. And emotions run high as you take aim and you fire towards where you want to be. And releasing so much of the negativity, so much of the hurt and the pain that defined you before, that you listened to and you thought, oh, well, that's wisdom. That's somebody older guiding me. That's somebody who knows me telling me a truth. You know, it might not be what I want to hear, but isn't that the real truth? Isn't that the person who isn't afraid to tell it as it is? Sometimes, yes. But here's the thing. Sometimes it's just a jerk. Sometimes that is a person with no social decorum and who is angry and bitter and takes it out on others. And you don't need that. You really don't need that. Your subconscious message when it comes to the moon, when it comes to Luna, is wisdom. You move forward in wisdom. You embrace wisdom. You strive for wisdom. It brings you to knowing that you and your loved ones are safe, to knowing that there is more here. I like it as his pincer reaches towards the stars and as her hand reaches towards the stars. There is more here than you could ever have imagined. It guides you forward. And the weight of the world does not have to be on your shoulders because things are going to be okay. They might not be the way that we imagined them or wanted them. But divinity does have a plan. And it leads you to your subconscious tarot message, which is the world. The world opens to you. What once felt like you were never going to be moving forward, what once felt like everything was closed, you were defined by failures and disabilities and disasters, you're now sitting there and saying no. The world is your oyster, and you're opening to it. You're moving forward towards something grand, and it's taking your breath away. And you are guided by your angels, by your spirit guides, by divinity, to embracing this world and not hiding away. <sighs> wow, Gemini, that was intense and absolutely beautiful. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end with a meditation. Once again, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our own positive energy as we move forward in peace, harmony, and power of self. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace, Gemini.